you. What's your name? Zia. Zia? I'm trying to raise money um, for, ki for kids who have cancer. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Give me something hot. Thank you. One day, your life, everything will be over. In our souls, we have to help out in some way. You can do it today. Look out your window on the wings of a dove. Hope's on the horizon of the African sun. Welcome back, Art Heads. It's James Conley on the bike for more half assed reporting. And today we're going to pop into the Matthew Marks Gallery and see an exhibition titled What Nerve? Thank you. Well, the subtitle for this show is Alternative Figures in American Art 1960 to Present. So what they've done here is uh, gotten together a group of four various alternative movements, figures, rather than having the, uh, the various groups sort of put together into galleries, they've mixed this all up. And uh, I'm not going to have time to go through and give you the titles of all the pieces, but I will talk a little bit about... Um, the four groups that they've singled out here for the presentation. First you had the Harry Who group, and uh, well, we've got some uh, vitrines, or cases of some of their work. See people like Jim Nook, Carl Worsen, Gladys Nielsen, It's Mimi Gross. I'll read a little bit from the press release. The Chicago-based Harry Who exhibited together from 1966 to 1969. Its members were Jim Falconer, Art Green, Gladys Nielsen, Jim Nutt, Selen Roca, and Carl Worsom. took root in the San Francisco Bay Area in the 1960s and 70s and is represented in the exhibition with works by Jeremy Anderson, Robert Aronson, Joan Brown, Roy DeForest, Robert Hudson, Ken Price, Peter Saul, Peter Volkus, in Ann Arbor, Mike Kelly, Carrie Lauren, Nigeria, and Jim Shaw formed Destroy All Monsters. And I believe that was kind of a rock and roll band collective. And in Providence, Rhode Island, you had members of Force Field, Matt Brinkman, Jim Drain, Leif Goldberg, and Eric Peterson, who were working from 1996 to 2003, and they created fictional personas, complete with pseudonyms and elaborate garments. And uh, I've never heard of this group before, so this is going to be a... Uh, introduction for me. There's Peter Saul right there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Congratulations. This is a group of drawings by Mike Kelly. Untitled Allegorical Drawings 1976. Set of 14 marker on file cards. And uh, well of course I'm, I'm familiar with Mike Kelly and his photography work, but uh, he was kind of a talented draftsman as well. Some of these uh, are very good. Carl 
worrisome. Spawning a yawn with the yellow awning. 1967 acrylic on canvas from the collection of Mimi Gross. Oh, gee, there's the artist Carl Worsom. This is a nice piece by Nigeria. And I guess she was a member of Destroy All Monsters, but uh, I like the frame. It's uh, watercolor and uh, maybe graphite on paper. This is ephemera for destroy all monsters. I guess this shows you how important uh, the printing, the publications are. It's a piece by Peter Saul. Black beauty, white shame. Let's go next door and see the rest of the show. We've got quite a turnout here tonight. More force field. This is Carl Worsom titled Baseball Girl. 1964. I'm just walking through the show, I think that there are a couple of um, interesting features about this. So we're starting out with the uh, Harry Who artists, and they were from Chicago, and uh, it was Tamara Gonzalez. And uh, they were sort of part of the, the beat scene. in California you had the funk artists but uh, one of the things they don't kind of differentiate here in this show is the difference between the little F funk artists and the capital F funk artists so the uh, the little F funksters were actually more involved with kind of the beatnik scene and a lot doing a lot of assemblage a lot of them were from LA Holtz was one of them, George Herms, and then you had the big F, the capital F funk artists who were, a lot of them were located around San Francisco and the Bay Area, and that was kind of when funk art went commercial. This, this is more force field. This is titled Two Works, both Lord of the Rings Modular Shroud. And so these are chain mail. This is a piece by Ken Price titled Red Egg. Now consider Ken Price a real member of the funk art movement or not, but he definitely was a very important and influential person as far as the, the Bay Area ceramicists. He uh, influenced a couple of generations of young potters and ceramic makers. Pretty nice painting by C. 
Sicilian Roca chocolate chip cookies, 1965. Now this Sicilian Roca, I guess, is part of the uh, Harry Who group, and uh, I wasn't familiar with their work, but uh, this is pretty nice painting. 1965 oil on canvas. I like the uh, kind of the directness of the paint application and the uh, the way that she's mixed her drawing with the painting. They don't have the dimensions, but I would say this is probably about. Uh, Seven by ten feet. This is Robert Hudson. Intermission painted steel. Yeah, strangely enough, this kind of makes me think of uh, Frank Stella's work from the last five years. Scott Rothkopf, uh, the curator from the Whitney. It's a nice Peter Saul. And, uh, Vietnam. It's got a lot of nice fluorescent paint, and uh, this is 1966. And uh, that still looks fresh. Joan Brown, man on horseback, and uh, Joan Brown, unfortunately, was killed while she was working on some kind of a an art project, an architectural monument in India, maybe back in the uh, mid '80s. piece on plexiglass by Gladys Nielsen. Titled Very Worldly. Acrylic and collage on plexiglass. So I guess you would be doing the drawing and the painting on the back side of this. I think it's a very glassy surface and uh, yes, some of this stuff I think makes me think of uh, yellow submarine illustrations well we'll take a stroll through the the last gallery Some guillotine 1968 oil on canvas. Yeah, uh, these force field guys are kind of growing on me. Called P Lobe Autumn Shroud 2001 Mixed Media. by Peter Volkus. Blue and Gray, 1959. Stoneware and slip glaze. And uh, I would say that that's four feet tall by 24 inches wide by 12. This is a large piece.
released by Art Green. Titled Disclosing Enclosures 1968 Oil on Canvas. And this is probably about five by eight feet. And uh, you know, I like the kind of pop art collage imagery, but also uh, it's got some nice flat areas of color that make me think of Nicholas Krushenik. Robert Hudson. Diamondback, painted steel. Jeez, lawn chairs. Jim Nutt. And Carl Wissom. I kind of like the, uh, the enamel surface there. From 1969. This is by Roy DeForest. This piece is titled A Farm, Boy, A Farm Boy's Autobiography. Polymer paint, carved wood, and wooden dowels. Now, I remember uh, looking at a lot of illustrations of Roy's work when I was a young student. And, uh, well, it's too bad they don't have more of his paintings here. I'm looking at this and kind of thinking of Miro, but uh, Roy had a kind of a theme with dogs for a long time. This is also Roy DeForest, the young Wordsworth, 1963, acrylic and wood. from the Peter and Sally Saul collection and uh, this might be one of uh, my favorite pieces in the show this is uh, pretty funky this is James Calm reporting on what nerve Alternative Figures in American Art, 1960 to present, here at the Matthew Marks Gallery, 523 West 24th Street in Chelsea. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Ian. Thank you so much. Thank you.